Here's a system example where we're asked to find yt for an input xt, which is cos of 2t. And here's our system. We've got the derivative of the y plus 3 times a time-shifted version equals the time-shifted version of the input. So we can start by writing out the Fourier transforms of each of these terms. And we get j omega times y omega plus 3, and this is a time shift, so we've got e to the minus 2 pi, which is the time shift, times omega, times y of omega, equals, and then again, a time shift on x, so e to the minus j pi omega, times x of omega. And then we can collect the terms, of course, h of omega equals y of omega, divided by x of omega, to find out that that equals e to the minus j pi omega divided by j omega plus 3 of e to the minus 2 pi omega. So this is our transfer uh, response of our uh, response of our impulse function and now we are going to ask well, what if the input was cos of 2t. So one thing you could do is use the knowledge that the output of a linear time invariant system, if you have a single frequency going in, is that the omega equals 2 is the only value there. And you could just work out the amplitude and phase of this for omega equals 2. Uh, but let's actually work out the full uh, equation just to make sure, confirm and prove it to ourselves. So in this case, y of omega equals uh, e to the minus j uh, pi omega divided by j omega plus 3e to the minus 2 pi omega, so that's just that function there, times the Fourier transform of the cos function. Okay, so the Fourier transform of the cos function uh, is going to be giving us uh, pi times delta omega minus 2 plus pi times delta omega plus 2. Okay, so now we remember that these functions, these delta functions, um, are only exist, they're, they're zero for all values except for where omega in this case equals 2, and in this case omega equals minus 2. So there's only two values of omega here that we have to worry about, because these are functions that are zero of course, as we know, these are functions that are zero everywhere except for plus two and minus two. That's what these functions are. So this is a function, exists at all w, but when we multiply it by these ones, you, it's multiplied everything by zero at all other values of w of omega except for at two and minus two. Okay, so let's uh, write out what these terms are gonna be then. So this equals, well this one here, the first term is going to be when omega equals 2. So we've got e to the minus j 2 pi, and e to the j of 2 pi or 4 pi or whatever equals 1. So we've got 1 on the top, divided by here, this equals 2, so j 2. And this one is 3 times e to the 2 pi omega, uh, sorry I'm missing a j. Um, and so this is e to the j 2 pi times 2, which is also equal to 1. So we've got this term here, times pi times delta omega minus 2. Um, and then the term which is going to be multiplying pi times delta omega plus 2 equals 1 divided, because we're putting now omega equals minus 2 into this expression here. So this still equals 1 on the numerator. This now equals minus 2 minus j2, and it still equals 1 times 3 on the denominator. Okay, so we now have these two functions here, these two terms, and we know that, of course, from the definition, we know that we can now take the inverse Fourier transform of this, and the inverse Fourier transform of a delta function, this is, is going to be constant, but this is with a time shift, uh, so frequency shift, and a frequency shift is going to give us the uh, a phase in the uh, time domain. Okay, so let's look at this uh, term out the front here. We can 
put a uh, two in front of here and a half out of here because we know what this one is and we can put a half out of the front of here and put a two the same for there okay because we can look in our formula sheet and see what the inverse Fourier transform of this is and so the inverse Fourier transform of this is equal to uh, e to the j 2t okay so let's let's just take one other step before then and actually look at this term here so this term here equals 3 plus j2 to the power of minus 1 and we can write that as a e to the j theta because it's just a complex number to the minus 1 uh, so this equals 1 divided by a times e to the minus j theta okay now a equals 3 squared plus 2 squared square rooted which equals the square root of 13 and theta equals the arc tan of this is the complex number here so it's opposite over adjacent so 2 divided by 3 okay so that's this number here this number here can be written in this form here 1 on the square root of 13 times e to the minus j of this angle and this number over here which has a negative 2 well that can be done exactly the same way as this except instead now you're going to have a negative 2 here so the opposite over adjacent is going to be a negative so you're going to have negative theta so it's going to be 1 on a e to the positive j theta because theta is going to be the negative of this uh, this term here okay so this gives us so now going back to our expression, we can now do the inverse Fourier transform to find out that yt equals 1 divided by the square root of 13 times 1 half of this inverse here, which is e to the j2t, plus 1 half of e to the j2t sorry I'm missing a term here um, uh, of course we've got the angle here e to the minus j theta I've, I've written the amplitude here for this term but I need to put the phase of this term so we've now got half e to the minus 2t times the phase which is e to the j theta Okay, now we can collect the indices here, which equals 1 on the square root of 13. Maybe I'll take the half out the front of e to the j 2t minus theta plus e to the minus j 2t minus theta. Okay, and we can recognize these two terms here with a half out the front. This is just the definition of cos. So this is 1 divided by the square root of 13 times cos of 2t minus theta, where theta is given by the arctan of 2 divided by 3.